Hey y'all, welcome. Yeah, so I have something exciting to share. I'm having a math problem. <laughs> okay, I hope uh, you thought that was as funny as I thought. Um, yeah. Hey y'all, I'm having a math problem. <laughs> okay, it was funny the first time I did it. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so we're gonna do this problem and it's uh, really fun and exciting. I think you'll really appreciate it. But as always, uh, thank you, Lord, for everything. You're incredible. Like, I love you, Lord Jesus Christ. And um, yeah, and with that said, like, I hope, like, you save us all from this corona uh, virus thing because it's kind of getting serious. And I hope you out there, like, pray for everyone as much as um, I will do my part in um, prayer. But what is it? Yeah, like, don't fear anything, obviously, not including the coronavirus, because, well, you should only fear Christ, right? Okay, all right, um, so, um, let's get on with this, shall we? Um, I think so, okay, so, like, you know, like, first notice that this says cosine of 2 pi over 5, but this says cosine of 4 pi over 5. Now, basic arithmetic uh, informs us that uh, 2 times 2 pi over 5 is 4 pi over 5. So, like, if uh, we say that, like, theta is equal to, oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, if theta is equal to 2 pi over 5, then obviously uh, 4 pi over 5 is equal to 2 theta, right? And so we might be tempted to, like, uh, do a double angle identity in this part and so on. Of course, this is called mental math because, well, you're crazy, you're mental. No, <laughs> because, well, we're saying that we're not allowed a calculator. So we can type this into a calculator and get a value. And it's like, okay, all right, impressive. Um, but we're trying to do it without a calculator. So again, like, you know, first angle you might take be like, oh yeah, this is cosine two theta if this is cosine theta. And therefore you can try and use a cosine double angle identity. And that's kind of what I did at the start when I was uh, posed um, or faced. Um, yeah, when this co question was posed to me, and I was faced with this challenge. Okay, okay, okay. But, like, you know, you'll see that the double angle identity does not do much. It does not bear fruit. So, uh, we go, all right, uh, so then what? So then, uh, magically, you think of this, <laughs> which is that um, you think of the fact that if uh, W, uh, let me write here. Actually, I was going to do this earlier. I'll do it right now. Because um, you guys have ADD like worse than I do and like I know like you're not gonna uh, watch uh, The full video unless I try to entertain you now. I'm kidding like I don't care if you're entertained <laughs> uh, To be honest as long as you're learning, but let's time ourselves on like uh, the time it's gonna take to finish this problem and that's how it no like I was using a saw in a previous video as a straight edge and so I thought this is quite an improvement and so I thought I share otherwise everybody knows what this is this is a ruler slash a compass and like uh, it's made of plastic and uh, it exists in our reality okay <laughs> so <laughs> back 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 to this so 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 like the realization that you'd get is this you'd get this amazing realization, which is that like if W is the following complex number, which is uh, if W is cosine um, and then uh, two pi over five, uh, and then uh, plus um, I times sine uh, two pi over five, that you would remember that this is one of the fifth roots of unity, that is, uh, unity is one, and so the fifth root of one, there are actually five fifth roots of one. Yes, the fifth root of uh, one is one, so uh, one is a fifth root of one. However, that's only one of five, so there are four other fifth roots of one. I'm saying if we take this W and put it to the power of five, we're going to get one. And so this is one of the five fifth roots of one. Um, okay, so how can I show that? Well, uh, remember, if you have a complex number, let's say uh, z equals, and then it's like cosine theta uh, plus i times sine theta, what you're saying, and uh, not having this r right here, is that, well, notice, by the way, this reads r cis theta, but yeah, not having the r means r is 1, obviously, right? That's what not having it means. Okay, so if uh, r is 1 and we have z here, 
uh, remember, z to the n by de Moivre's theorem is going to be, uh, well, let me keep the z there, and I'll write the z to the n in the next line. z to the n is going to be uh, r to the n, but again, r is 1, so 1 to the n is still 1. Um, but otherwise, cosine n theta uh, plus i times sine n theta, right? Okay, cool. So having recognized that, uh, if we take w and put it to the power 5, w to the fifth power is going to be uh, cosine of 5 times uh, theta, which is 5 times uh, 2 pi over 5, and then plus i times i times sine of uh, 5 times uh, 2 pi over 5, right? Okay, cool. There we are. All right, now if we simplify, we don't need this anymore, right? I was just reminding you of what DeMont's theorem said for uh, raising complex numbers to any power you'd like. But anyway, anyway, uh, now this says that w to the fifth is equal to, uh, it's equal to cosine of two pi, right? Cosine of two pi plus i times sine of two pi. We still have a long way to go. And so for that reason, you know, I'm not gonna explain in detail why cosine of two pi is one and sine of two pi is zero, but you should know that. So sine of two pi is zero, and therefore this part is zero. Cosine of two pi is one. I just got w to the fifth is equal to one, which means, as I said correctly, w is uh, one of the fifth roots of one. I see. So we just said that the statement that's uh, true about w is w to the fifth is equal to one, right? Okay, cool. Now, notice that w itself is not equal to one. <laughs> w is not equal to one. w to the fifth is equal to one. Yeah, okay, so from w to the fifth is equal to, equal to one, we could, uh, sorry, is equal to one, we could uh, rewrite this statement to say uh, w to the fifth minus one is equal to zero. Okay, but w to the fifth minus one is factorable. Specifically, we can write it as, my color coding doesn't make any sense, but whatever, you'll live with it. We can factor w to the fifth minus one as w minus one times, uh, and then it's gonna be w to the fourth plus w to the third plus w squared plus w plus one. So we have all this equals zero. Because again, the product of these two is going to be w to the fifth minus one. You could do it yourself and check, but it's true. Just uh, trust it, trust it. Okay, now remember, I said that w is not one. So um, if w to the fifth minus one is equal to zero, and this whole thing then is equal to zero, so that is the product of these two is equal to zero, and we know that w is not one, then that means that because w is not one, the w minus one is not zero. So w minus one not equal to zero. So then for the product of this and this to equal zero, it must mean that this here is equal to zero. That is w to the fourth plus w cubed plus w squared plus w plus one is equal to zero. All right, where do I write that? Because that's basically the rest of the work we have to do. So I'll write it down here. So we just said, well, I actually have it right here. So uh, in the interest of space, I'll write this is equal to zero. But wait, what does that mean? <laughs> uh, that means since W is that, that we got to raise it first to the fourth power, then the third, blah, 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 add them up and set that equal to zero. And somehow this has everything to do with what we're trying to show. <laughs> yeah? Okay, just believe it, believe it. It has everything uh, to do with what we're trying to show. All right, so as I said, this here is equal to zero, but with that specific W, right? When we say W every time on this video, we're talking about that W right there we wrote in blue. So what is it to the fourth power going to be? Well, the same way that the fifth power worked out. That's how we're going to play it. So w to the fourth is going to be cosine of 4 times 2 pi over 5, right? And since, as you can see, I'm going to write a long string. Let's simplify anywhere we can so that we don't have to do so much writing. So what is this? This is going to be cosine of 8 pi over 5, right? So, okay, cosine of 8 pi over 5. Got it. And then... Uh, plus i times sine of uh, 8 pi over 5. So now I have finished writing w to the fourth. And so anticlimactically, w to the third is going to be cosine of 6 pi over 5, right? That's uh, 3 times 2 pi over 5, yeah. And then plus i times sine of, okay, 
there's a concert or something going on outside and a friend texted me saying that like I should probably enjoy the nice day out the sunny day out and I'm like well sun ain't going nowhere I'm having a lot of fun with this right now W to the second is um, I actually don't have friends um, it's like acquaintance I suppose um, I don't like people four pi over five plus I really like Jesus um, I times <laughs> I mean and you guys uh, those of you that are watching this <laughs> no I'm kidding um, <laughs> I mean, maybe. Okay, alright, so, so far I've gotten to W squared, and then finally W itself, Jesus Christ, uh, cosine of 2 pi over 5, and then uh, plus I sine of 2 pi over 5, okay? Where is all this going, bruh? Like, and then we just finished writing W, and then finally, finalement, plus 1. Alright, where is all this going? All this is equal to 0. Because what we just wrote, the string we wrote, the long string, is this is equal to 0. Got it. Okay, cool. Now, let me bring to your attention, let me bring to your attention the following, which is this. Which is, uh, notice that uh, the... Uh, measure 8 pi over 5 if we plot it what is that going to be well let's see um, 8 pi over 5 would be like 5 pi over 5 which is pi and then plus 3 pi over 5 right so you're gonna end up here you're gonna end up here right somewhere there okay but it doesn't matter where you actually end up because all I'm interested in is rewriting 8 pi over 5 as a negative angle measure which is going clockwise fine well, together, the clockwise uh, negative angle here and the 8 pi over 5 make 2 pi. So we have 8 pi over 5 uh, plus this x angle measure, right? Just from here to here, right? Uh, plus x is equal to 2 pi. What's that in terms of pi over 5? That's uh, 10 pi over 5. Got it. When I subtract uh, 8 pi over 5 from both sides, I get that x is equal to uh, 2 pi over 5. But... It's negative 2 pi over 5 because we went clockwise, right? Uh, so, yes, this angle is uh, negative 2 pi over 5. Got it. So, uh, I replace this 8 pi over 5 with negative 2 pi over 5. So, uh, I'm going to write negative 2 pi and then over 5. And then here also, negative 2 pi over 5, right? Negative 2 pi over 5. What about the 6 pi over 5? Well, we do the same thing, and if we write it as uh, a negative angle measure, it's gonna be negative 4 pi over 5. Kind of do the same detail I did, uh, but I'm not gonna like talk you through this detail, because this ain't what this video is about, right? Okay, this is about like, um, yeah math man not like arithmetic uh, repeatedly all right all right all right now now you see there are some kind of nice things happening uh, what exactly well we see that like uh, for example uh, that this guy kind of looks like this guy right and in fact uh, we observe that because sine is odd and I have a few really good videos on even in odd functions and so watch those um, they're not getting their deserved attention. Anyway, anyway, we know that because sine is odd, the sine of negative theta is equal to negative sine of theta, right? And we also know, because cosine is even, that um, cosine of negative theta is equal to cosine of theta, right? Okay, cool. So, it means that everywhere we see cosine of some negative item, we could just get rid of the negative. That's right there. That's right there. Yeah, okay, and where else? Well, no, nowhere else. And everywhere where we see sign of some negative stuff, we can put the negative in front. So we get rid of this negative right there and put it in place of this plus sign. Got it. And where else? Right here. We get rid of this negative uh, and then we can put it right here. Got it. Anywhere else? No. But look, 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 bingo. Um, that is identical to this, but now there we can see very clearly there are uh, additive inverses. There are negatives of one another, and this here, and who else? Um, there's got to be right there. Okay, his partner. Okay, they cancel. So who survived? Well, let's make it clearer by getting rid of these guys. All right. So getting rid of these guys, we can see uh, that what we have. Wait, shoot, did I get rid of something I'm just supposed to? I don't think so. I don't think so. So we've got this. What does that say? Well, I need this space here. So what that says is cosine 2 pi over 5. Where else do we have that? Right here. 
So two cosine of uh, uh sorry two cosine of two pi over five. Ah, you see why this is related to what we was doing? Ah, that's fun, right? And this and this combine also, to, but to what? Plus two cosine of four pi over five. Got it. And this all, well, plus one. Let's not forget the one right there. Uh, equals zero. So instead, we could have equals negative one. Let's do that. Uh, because I see then what I have here is exactly twice that. So we factors out a 2 and then we divide by 2 on both sides of what we have left and we see that um, this is equal to negative a half. Yeah? Okay, cool. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I did. Uh, keep watching. Take care.